Hello. This presentation is part of the symposium Deep Integration Between Development and Cognitive Science. And I chose the topic of making the case for procedural metacognition. In the last 12 years, the developmental study of metacognition has undergone a succession of insights, revisions, and ongoing debates in which animal evidence has played a central role. Under the influence of comparative psychology, a shift in the experimental paradigms to be used with young children occurred. This shift led to reconsidering the view that metacognition involves the ability to report about one's mental states. Additional integrative steps later involve neuroscientific and anthropological investigations. More integration remains to be effected. So this is the general plan that I propose that I will follow. First, what does metacognition mean? Interestingly, there is a difference in definitions as used in experimental and in developmental psychology. In experimental psychology, metacognition means the ability to evaluate one's own cognitive success in a given task. For example, in attempting to remember a proper name and monitor one's own activity on this basis. In developmental psychology, however, most scientists define metacognition as the ability to know what one knows. For example, Joseph Perner. The two definitions point to two different functions of metacognition. Procedural metacognition involves the control and monitoring of one's own cognitive activity. Declarative metacognition reports one's judgments about one's own cognitive activity based on one's own experience and beliefs about the task and on one's own individual competencies. From the viewpoint of early developmental research, metacognition has to be a declarative ability. Under Flavel's influence, metacognitive abilities have been seen to emerge around six years. Convergence, converging evidence suggested that in verbal tests, three-year-old children are unable to reliably report what they know or don't know or assess their uncertainty. Hence, developmental psychologists took metacognition to require some form of self-directed mind reading. In 2008, however, a turning point in the developmental study of metacognition was kindled by the introduction of an experimental paradigm, first developed in primatology, in order to test metacognitive competences in very young children. This paper was published in Developmental Science by Francis Balcombe and Luan Gerken under the title, Three-Year-Old Children Can Access Their Own Memory to Guide Responses on a Visual Matching Task. Let's present a brief history of the turning point. Comparative psychologists had demonstrated that nonverbal metacognition is present in non-human animals. Work by Hampton, Imman and Shetterworth, Cornelson and Terrace, Shields, and Smith and colleagues found ample evidence. Evidence for metacognition in rhesus monkeys and in dolphins was based on a paradigm in which a second order evaluative task is embedded in a first order cognitive activity, such as a perceptual discrimination or an associative memory task. Task completion in all cases includes a metacognitive step in which animals have to express their confidence level in reaching 
a correct decision. The main types of questions that have been experimentally addressed are, will an animal appropriately choose or decline to respond, that is opt out as a function of task difficulty in a perceptual or memorial task? Will an animal ask for information or request hints only when needed? And will an animal be able to appropriately wager about one's its own choice correctness after he made his decision? On all these three questions, it was found that indeed resource monkeys can do, do the, can find the appropriate decision based on their metacognition. Rhesus monkeys were found to decline most the most difficult trials in visual discrimination tasks and also in memory tasks. They generalize the uncertainty, uncertainty responses to new tasks without new reinforcements. So it's not it's not that they simply learned a, a cost benefit schedule related to a given stimulus. They use uncertainty, uncertainty responses even when feedback is blocked, that is delivered every 10th trial, which again excludes a mere conditioning idea. So how do we get there fr from, from these comparative studies to developmental studies? Let's go back to Balcom and Gherkin's initial study. They presented to three-year-old children a non-verbal opting out task, replicating the memory conditioning and control paradigm used by primatologists Shield and Smith. Given the option to skip uncertain trials, they found that children flexibly opted out when they failed to remember the items involved. And this was shown by a subsequent forced choice recognition test where what children actually did remember or not was made manifest. So this study showed that three-year-old children are able to use a non-declarative procedural form of metacognition even though they fail to verbally express what they know or don't know. Additional evidence was collected for procedural metacognition in young children in the wake of this initial 2008 paper. A dissociation between metacognition and mind reading performances in three year old was made, uh, was evidenced in Bernard Proust and Clement 2014. A contrast between implicit monitoring and explicit confidence reports in three year olds was also. Uh, demonstrated in, a, in, in several papers, including the one by Paulus and colleagues 2013, Lyon and Getty 2013. A dissociation between informing another agent versus declaring, declaring what one knows was found in four-year-olds. That is, the children are much better in finding out when they can inform than in verbally declaring that they know. So there is very interesting contrast here. Coupil, Romain Monnier, and Quider 2016 showed that pre-verbal children can request help when needed. And they also showed that, again, pre-verbal children can retrospectively evaluate the accuracy of their first order decision. This was uh, Goupil and Quidder, 2016 again. Okay. So, in conclusion, procedural metacognition precedes declarative metacognition. The two forms of metacognition are present in adult metacognition and often prompt conflicting decisions. So, this has been shown for a long time by Coriat and colleagues and many others. It's known also that these two forms of metacognition have different neural signatures are recently uh, demonstrated by Goupil and Quider. 
2016. What are the additional steps toward integration with cognitive science that occurred in relation to metacognition? Let me first quote this book, Cognitive Anthropology and the, the uh, where cognitive anthropology is used to study the development of metacognition in a cross-cultural way. This book was composed uh, expressly to understand uh, the, the problem of variability of metacognition across culture with the help of theories from developmental psychology, experimental psychology, cognitive neuroscience, cognitive anthropology, and the philosophy of mind. The main questions addressed were, do spe cultural specific factors such as child rearing, conversational practices, linguistic syntax and semantics, beliefs about the self, religious rituals, generate developmental variations in procedural metacognition and in declarative metacognition. It was found first, uh, Paul Harris published his contribution showing that children from three continents present the same developmental asymmetry in their spontaneous utterances. That is, they deny knowledge to themselves before denying knowledge to others. So this seems to be a universal feature. However, cultures valuing children's autonomy and observational learning, such as Maya, provide less corrective feedback than cultures valuing parental control on education and formal learning. This difference in early child rearing and later parenting uh, behavior has a tremendous impact on the development of metacognition. We see it by uh, the impact of these culture of these cultural practices on attention and learning. Yucatec Mayan infants imitate toy use, but without any influence of an ostensive cue provided by the adult. This Schneidman, Gaskins and Woodward's 2016 study offered a, a, an incredible uh, counterexample to the well-known study by Xibra and Gagay 2009, where it was shown that European children imitate toy use only when an ostensive cue is provided. Other differences have been demonstrated uh, recently. For example, the, the, the development of procedural metacognition in the informing reporting tasks was found to differ in Yucatec Mayan and in German children. Japanese children were shown to be better at selecting whom to teach, while German children were better at selecting whom to learn from. So, Evidently, uh, social attentional practices impact the way uh, children understand uh, what they know in a procedural way. Another important aspect of the book addressed the question of evidentials. Do they impact source monitoring, uh, metacognitive ability? Papa Fragu and Unal showed that there is no automatic impact of the syntax of evidentials on source monitoring. However, Livier Le Guen, uh, an anthropologist of Maya culture, showed that obligatory evidentials conjoined with conversational practices that are dedicated to uh, uh, scrutinizing the sincerity of a speaker influences attention to informational source in Mayan. Further integration remains to be done. First, the first issue, which is in my viewpoint, from my viewpoint of major interest, is that of metacognitive feelings. Human procedural metacognition depends on dedicated feelings generated by predictive heuristics 
and these heuristics have been shown to be acquired by reinforcement learning. So this has been shown very early on by Coriat colleagues, Schwartz, and Clore, and others. Now there remain very important issues to be explored. What is the evolution of conscious aspect, affects that has made procedural metacognition possible? They are first uh, pioneering work in this direction by McKinley and colleagues, Merker, what? Uh, they demonstrated that consciousness uh, and emotion have evolved together. But we now need to understand whether conscious feelings guide children's cognitive decisions as well as they guide uh, those possibly of metacognitive animals. A second interesting issue is uh, concerns the relation between metacognition and mind reading. Does the early development of procedural metacognition influence the ability to understand others' beliefs? Does declarative metacognition influence the development of mind reading? In contrast, are there forms of procedural metacognition that depend on mind reading for their development? For example, judgments of learning that seem to require mind reading, whereas, for example, feeling of knowing doesn't require mind reading. Three, uh, the third issue is that of the relation between philosophy of mind and child development. I think there is a lot to do in this area. For example, the question, does procedural metacognition as it develops in early childhood rely on propositional representations, as was first assumed by everyone, or non-propositional affective representations, which I call personally affordance sensings, or on sensory cues. So I think there is a lot to do on this area, which is an interdisciplinary subject, absolutely fascinating and, and, and very important in my view. Thank you for your attention. You can download a, an article presenting in detail the arguments I briefly summarized here entitled From Comparative Studies to Interdisciplinary Research on Metacognition in Animal Cognition and Behavior 2019. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>